No risk of Colford Cauldron ever erupting again, they used to say. Guess they were wrong. Not everything blew up in the Calamity. Why Colford Cauldron here blew up way ahead of its time. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rock. If you wanted to survive something like that, you had to learn to adapt. You can also see since I've got leechade on now, I'm gaining health by hitting things. I just want to hit the flower. Oh, this is where the targeting can be a little weird if there's something the game really wants you to shoot at. But yes, I got three points of damage for shooting it. Uh, the more damage you do, the more health you gain. The most I've ever seen myself gain is five or six points with a single hit. So in a way, the beasts of the wilds, they're all survivors too. It takes a certain stubborn pride to keep on living in a place like this. As for us, we learned an awful lot from Colford Cauldron. That learning led to some interesting inventions. The raw power of the world fell right into our hands. Ah, come on. My fire is just outside the reach of these. So, it's not entirely apparent when you first get the fire bellows, but these are really good. Uh, you gotta upgrade them first to make it really worthwhile. Playing with the cauldron's fires became an addiction. But you have that ammo gauge in the bottom right. You just hold down the button, and once... It is empty, you just have to wait a little bit for it to regenerate. If you want, you can just kind of tap the button, uh, so you're never really running out, because it immediately starts regenerating when you let go of the button. Um, holding it down still does a lot more damage, though, than just tapping it, because the fire is just a little bit more constant. Can't fault our people for their natural curiosity now. Hell. There we go. Something was blocking my shot. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here. It's awful hot in there. Goddamn Packers. Given scent of sulfurous dirt. The taste of air so hot it sticks to your lungs. All sorts of awful things crawling under. You can cook those things, but you can't eat them. Also with the fire bellows, just because it's just a constant stream of damage, having leechade equipped also means that you're getting a constant amount of health coming back to you. Never thought we'd find so much life in all that ash. We 
kept on sifting through the cauldron's secrets anyway. we swept the side, the more life we found. Also, the firebells completely ignore armor. So even when these guys curl up, still do the same amount of damage to them. Place is inhospitable as they come. Oh, come on. Still, we pressed on. After all, when we looked down inside Colford Cauldron. Looked down through all the smoke and flames. saw in there the heart of the world, the heart now laid bare by the calamity. We had to have it. As for the kid, he just has to get that shard out of there. Too bad taking that thing woke up every last stink eye from here to Charleston Bog. Thankfully, stink eyes aren't much of a problem since the fire just goes straight through armor. We just sit in place while you just. He is thinking he's got to trek all the way back around the cauldron. Luckily, the cauldron cooked up a little shortcut for him. Sure, it ain't the most convenient path. Biggest stink guy he's ever seen is waiting for him on the other side. Pops open on him like a pimple on a school day. And where there's one stink guy, there's always more. Cauldron's tenants all gather up to bid the kid a fond farewell. Kid don't shed any tears for him though. Spyglass, you can still see the cauldron from the city. But all the fires died out. There's nothing left of it. It comes back looking like the inside of a chimney. The shard works like a charm. You can hear the monument's heartbeat again. Looks like the next thing we're going to upgrade is the memorial. The memorial may be finished, but our part is far from over. Now it's a lot taller, and there's a giant book on the top for some reason. But, the game tracks all these vigils even before you unlock the extra ones. So when you upgrade it, you might have several to claim. And first, the culture that we got in the last level is just from getting the required amount of mementos, which is 15. The culture. A still life of old unwanted keepsakes. Got the inspiration, which is to upgrade uh, five weapons all up to the third upgrade tier. The inspiration. 
A forge can fashion anything. Got the city, which is just getting a certain amount of money. It's ten thousand dollars. The city. Its riches nothing but fragments now. And the faith, which is uh, surviving a who knows where with, while having at least two uh, shrine idols on. The faith. Mother, this one's for you. That's $9,000 we just got. So it was clearly time to buy stuff. We're all a little short on friends these days, so that's a welcome sight. And we have the fourth and final pet, which is a... it's a pecker. Alright, my favorite. Pecker, stop! Hey! Gotta watch your fingers around that little guy. Hit. Nope, come here! Oh. Stop! They said the wild could never be tamed. If only they could see us now. Time to take a look at the store. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see. Bull Brandy just gives us... Um, increases our defense by 15%. Graver Gimlet. This is one I've never been able to use effectively. Um, buy it later when there's less upgrades to get. But basically, every time you kill a foe, there's a 5% chance that you'll turn zealous. And while you are zealous, uh, the damage you'll deal out will be doubled for 3 seconds. This is a really weird thing. When he becomes zealous, the kid becomes giant. Um, it's only for three seconds though, so I've never really been able to use that one very well. Now let's get these secret skills, why not? They're cheap. Let's see. Hmm. I definitely want something foul for the fire bellows. Alright. upgrade the bellows a little bit. Either 20% fuel generation or the flames spread wider. Um, like a wider cone, they don't go up farther. Hmm. I think go with wider for now? At least it won't get cold around here with that thing around. Uh, the next one is either flames cause damage over time to enemies or each uh, little flame cloud does an extra one point of damage, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. When you're shooting out tons of little clouds. Um, hum. Last thing, burn. Why not? On the inside, a fire bellows ain't nothing like its more popular air-spitting cousin. Now, again, more fuel generation, or... Uh, the flames will cripple foes, which, when an enemy becomes crippled, it just means that they move slower. Uh, this one can actually be really handy, but we didn't go with one generation in the first upgrade, so let's do it this time. Without an insulated air intake, that thing's liable to blow up on you. Again, let's upgrade the hell out of the pike. More damage, or again, faster throw reload. We want more damage. When you've got a solid balance, you've got what you need. Now let's fully upgrade weapon for once. Either your spear will just completely ignore armor and do full damage all the time, or you'll be able to throw two spears at once. Again, the throw's slow. I only use it when I really can't reach an enemy. And all I've got the carbine for that now, so yeah, definitely. Your attack should ignore the armor. Any brush's pie can cut to the bone, but that one can cut through it. Let's see. What else haven't we upgraded? Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll save our money, just so that we can upgrade the later ones. 
still got two weapons to find. When one type of firepower ain't enough, there's always the carbine and the bellows. We spotted a pecker carrying a shard to Mount Sand. Well, next time we'll check out the proving ground for the incinerator, or the bellows, excuse me, and also Mount Zand. See you then.